Uh, my name is Aisha Pathak and I am the Turkey Country Manager at Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore. Today, um, right now, we're going to be focusing on medicine and really what to expect. Um, I congratulate you. Um, I mean, of course, I don't even know, you know, we haven't met, I guess, but the point is that I congratulate you regardless because I think like never before has, is it so clear that, you know, we, we need people interested in this subject area. Um, I think there's a whole newborn respect for doctors and anyone in the medical field right now. Um, it's not at all easy. Of course, you know more than I do how hard it is. It's a life choice. So it's a very financially, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a commitment. So just the fact that you are so young and already, of course, thinking right now about medicine and surgery, um, you know, I, I really applaud you for that. Um, so to my future budding medics, um, what to expect from Universita Cattolica as a general, but specifically, of course, with an optic of medicine and surgery. Um, this is just a hook. I don't expect you to make a six year life decision with a 20 minute Zoom call virtually, okay? Uh, the whole point of this is that I give you the basic information. I give you some analytical thinking so that you don't just pick up a brochure or, you know, uh, look at the website and say, okay, that you can do also. I'm here to answer questions that maybe are not so clear or that you really want to discuss even just what student life um, can be like at Universita Cattolica. But let me just um, now, let you know, let's start with the actual slides. Um, that's a photo I took of campus, actually. Um, so I'm not a photographer, but I think that that is when you come to our Rome campus, because we, um, I, even though I'm based in Milan and often Universidad Cattolica is associated to Milan, actually medicine is taught in Rome and you'll understand exactly why it's taught in Rome and not in Milan. Um, that is the campus. That is a 15, a central campus because it's just about 15 minutes away from the Vatican. I'm not, I don't know how many of you have been to Rome um, but it's it's pretty close considering how big Rome is and um, it's such a huge space it couldn't be more central than that because we have the hospital which is the reason why we teach it in Rome and university in the same space okay so it's this beautiful beautiful campus um, which is dominated by the faculty of medicine so uh Okay, that's, of course, I, I already introduced myself. What does it mean to be a Turkey country manager, to have the honor of this beautiful country that I am so am in love with? And I have been coming to Turkey for the last nine years, and we've only recently started working with Firenze. So, um, you know, I, I'm so, so excited to come and visit with Daniele um, and his team. But I'm also giving you a QA and a um, um, QR code. So when we finish the Zoom, I know that you have a lot of different Zoom calls to attend, but if you want to carry on with more questions just you know you can scan that there's no software ne necessary to download so we can carry on talking um, but yes so to be a country manager means I am your point of contact within Universita Cattolica I work with Firenze I'm the person training them and vice versa um, so you know that in despite being the largest private university in Europe um, we have a very individual approach to our students and that is why I will be your point of contact. Let's go straight to the point. Why Medicine at Cattolica? There are many very good universities as part of this education days of Firenze study in Italy days. I'm sure you'll be listening to quite a few of them. So this is what Catholic has to offer these options the, what I put on this slide has been my selection of answers. There is more, but if I was in your shoes, this is what this is what I'm looking at. And this is what you need to understand if it's a priority for you, if it's a fit for you. OK, because there are many good universities to teach medicine, even in Turkey, even in the UK, even in the US, There's many of them. But every university offers something different. I just going to start off with the fact that since we are in the middle of a pandemic, um, if you just Google the program director, so the person who would be teaching you for the next six years, uh, Luca Richelli, he's a pneumologist. So of course, pneumology, respiratory area, that's unfortunately where COVID does its damage. And he's been, he's part of the um, scientific committee of the government. So, you know, Italy has been hit hard. Um, first wave, we got hit again, second wave, but we're also the first European country to get out of the waves. Um, so he's sort of there guiding the government um, on what to do and what not to do. Also, um, the hospital, Policlinico Gemelli, has been up 
in the news and I promise you when I turn on the television at dinner every two nights on average um, there is Professor Di Kelly and other professors of the hospital that are there um, that are contributing to, to, to everything that's going on with the pandemic. We are the forefront of research. And not only do we have our own hospital, but we actually created a Columbus COVID hospital. So we don't all just have a big hospital with a wing, which most hospitals in the world do, but we actually created 100% COVID hospital, okay? But apart from COVID, um, because hopefully by the time you join, things will be well under control. Um, we are top 150 in the world by QS subject rankings. If you just think how many universities teach medicine in the world, I can assure you that to be top 150 is not easy. Okay. Um, in terms of services to international students, this is the big thing that is in common with Universita Cattolica as a general. When I think about this, you know, like the Italian higher education landscape, there's just a few really that can really cater to the demanding levels, let's say, I was an international student myself, that I think students and families need. We're one of them. Um, two ways that we do this with medicine. We are offering, because of the COVID, a proctoring exam for non-EU students, okay? So you don't have to travel to a test center date. Uh, so it doesn't really matter if there's lockdown, no lockdown, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, and of course, you have a dedicated contrary manager. So I know, you know, I know your culture, of course, I don't speak Turkish 100% yet, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm familiar with that. You have an education agency, of course, that can assist you. Um, and with entry requirements, I'm personally in touch with all the consulates, with the embassies, and you will have the guidance assistance that you need. And this is just, you know, in the optic of medicine. Um, we are private. What To be private in different parts of the world means different things. Sometimes it's something prestigious, sometimes it's not. Here, it's in a very prestigious sense, um, but also be, it, it gives us freedom. It gives us money to give, you know, to be able to fund many different services and options, but it also gives us freedom on exam dates. As we're going to have a slide on the exam entrance exam for medicine, because there is one, but it is not the IMAT. It is not what the majority of Italian universities offer. And that means we can do it when we please. So we've established very specific dates. Um, and it also means that we can release the dates. So if you apply to Universa Cattolica's medicine exam, you're probably gonna be one of the very first ones to get an offer, okay, in terms of timing, because of the chronological way we do things. We're one of the only Last time I checked, we were the only university in Italy to offer a double degree on medicine. So if some of you are interested in the United States and you have the dream of getting, you know, maybe continuing with your specialization in the United States, it helps to have a double degree. Uh, frankly speaking, it's, ex it's exceptionally hard. Um, in six years, you need to do two different medical degrees from two different universities. We do this with Thomas Jefferson Uni in Philadelphia, in the United States. It is extremely expensive. You know very well how the United States are, right? With med, with, you know, especially with medical programs. But you know, if um, if you're up for the challenge and if you can get finance for that, I mean, it, it is an incredible, incredible opportunity. Um, the reason why we offer medicine in Rome is this big hospital. It's the second largest hospital in the country. It is number one for oncology research. It is called the Policlinico Gemelli, which means if you are studying medicine in a university that actually owns the hospital, sharing the same campus space, you have early access to patients. Most universities around the world get you to see patients from fourth year. We start from the second semester of the third year. And it also means that you are breathing and experiencing the medic atmosphere, okay? Remember, medicine is a life choice. It's not just a subject that you study, okay? Um, you will spend so many long hours, right? Especially towards the end of your degree um, in a hospital with medic, with patients, discussing with nurses. Um, when you enter just our canteens on a well-earned break, when I... I'm not even a medical student, but when I visited the Rome campus, I opened the canteen door and then I saw those, the people with the white coats, you know, uh, and I think it's just an incredible atmosphere to really network as well. And then we have more places for non-European students, according to passport, than EU students. And again, 
if you're looking at medicine abroad, usually as a non-EU, there are less places and there's more competition. And this is definitely not the case for us. Okay, so we have 80 places in total, 50 for non-EU students, 30 for EU students. And so you are paying to study probably the most difficult subject out there for 80 people in class with a very high retention rate. So at the, we start with 80 and we will finish with 80, or maybe if there's a very small dropout, two, three units, usually no more with 77 students at the end of sixth year. Um, so, so that's really almost, I'm not saying it's a one-to-one -one teaching, but very close to that. Just for those of you that are number lovers, um, you know, I think here the, the key thing is, of course, to say that we're big, uh, we're very prestigious, we are considered an Ivy League university in the country, okay, and next year we're hitting the 100 year mark, so it's going to be big celebrations there. In the Rome campus, you have more services than, for example, the Milan campus in many ways. Why? Because the space is there. We have tennis courts, we have football courts. So if you're, you know, if you're into your sports and it's very important to exercise when you're studying so much, of course, um, there is obviously the International Student Center. You have student associations so that you can make friends with other international students of other universities in the same, you know, sorry, in the same city. Language support. Guys, you're learning Italian as part of the program, of course, because your patients speak Italian. We are a non-English speaking country, but I strongly suggest you integrate that. I mean, Firenze, of course, have so many already language courses. They're well connected, so you should start early. But if you, for whatever reason, you don't start early or you need to carry on, when you're here, we also have extra language support to learn Italian, okay? Obviously, libraries and accommodation. For example, the Milan campus, we're too central and we don't have the space. We don't have accommodation for international students, not not easy anyway okay to find it instead in rome where you would be studying yes we do um there are specific residence halls for international students um and that's about 20 minute walk away okay from from the university sorry yeah from the university now entry requirements we will obviously talk about the entrance exam next right but before that what do you need? You need to get, if you're doing your Turkish national diploma, I need you to pass that, okay? I need you to pass that and I need you to pass the YUK exam, okay? The TYT and AYT with the minimum points. You do not need to already have an offer in hand from a Turkish university. We don't need that. I just need you to be able to access university in Turkey if you wanted to, all right? So you just need to pass the YUK exam. If you're doing the IB diploma, I need you to get the full 24 points IB diploma. I don't, I cannot accept um, a IB certificate, okay? If you're doing A-levels, I need three A-levels. There's no specific subject. And if you're doing the American diploma, I need you to get three APs along with that, okay? So this is just the basic diploma requirement, okay? Um, now, there is no, we don't look at grades for the entrance exam. We don't even look at what subjects, okay? This is the official side of things. But when I speak to students that are enrolled, they tell me, oh, Aisha, the chemistry, the biology, it's tough. Obviously, it's medicine, it's science. So you don't need, we will never as a university ask you evidence that you are studying and being really good in chemistry and biology, but I am telling you unofficially, like as in you won't see this written anywhere, but I'm telling you out of my experience, this is of course what you need to focus on. I'm guessing most of you already are, okay? But the main criteria for entering, and it's not easy, is the entrance exam. It's easy to pass because there are 65 questions. You only need to get a very low amount of, but what's the difficult part? It's to be high up in the ranking. Okay, we have hundreds of applications. So everyone's going to sit the test from their house, okay, or the EUs are going to go into a test center. But then to be in the top 50 non EU places or the top 30 EU places, that is hard. All right. So everything goes according to the entrance exam. All right. Then we can give you a conditional offer. Okay. Please pass the Turkish diploma. Please get the full IB. Please get three A levels. Okay. On top of this, you need to think about language. The program is 100% taught in English. That is why you need an IELTS of six, a TOEFL of 80. We can also accept a Cambridge. Um, we cannot accept Duolingo for medicine, okay? Um, 
again, medium level, right? Six for IELTS, 80 for TOEFL. Again, we're not English speakers, but this is what this is the B2 level that we are required and you need to have this by the time you get an offer so when we look at dates you know that you need to have this by say March so what's the entrance exam I told you it is not the IMAT it's very similar to the IMAT but it is not the IMAT okay it's called the Catholica medical entrance exam um, there are 65 questions as you can see they are Broken down biology is the big one, along with the psychoattitudinal subjects. And I'm super excited to talk to Turkish students because Anglo-Saxon, um, even students that follow up from other countries really find it hard with the psychoattitudinal questions, logic-based questions. But for somehow, I mean, I think it's because of your preparation, especially from the Turkish diploma as well, or of course the very good IBs, you guys managed to, to do really well. That is why we have Turkish students all the years on our medicine program. So um, you guys should be able to do this uh, without too much issues compared to some other countries. And of course, chemistry is big. Um, physics and maths is just eight questions, but you need to be at least basically familiar with that. And then five questions that can be completely, to be honest, ignored. I mean, these are the religious and ethical culture. Um, there are ways to prepare for it. There's absolutely no obligation to be or to follow any specific religion. My name is Muslim. My surname is Hindu. I would not be able to do this job if there was an obligation, of course. So, the, but the, those five questions, they're on the side. The main stuff is the science and the logic, okay? And you have one minute per question. It is tough. How do you prepare for it? You prepare for it by, of course, the online simulator that you access when you're in your final year and you apply. And then there is already, if you're, for example, some of you are a bit younger and you're not applying yet, you can already look on the website. There are PDF documents already to get used to this. Very, very important note that is different from last year. We have two different exam dates, two different application processes according to your nationality if you are non-EU or EU. If any of you are double nationality, so Turkish plus a European country, you will have to follow the European ranking, okay? The EU wins over the non-EU, so you must be clear when, um, when you apply. So you apply online, you pay 160 euro application fee, okay? This covers the admission costs um, and the entrance exam costs. You practice by the online simulator and the other materials and you take the entrance exam. Here you see the dates. All of this is on the website, international.unica.it. So for the non-EUs, most of you, you'll be sitting the exam on March 30th. For the EU holder, passport holders, you will be taking the exam on 26 February. The deadline is quite late. Don't wait for it. Don't follow that deadline. Apply now because the sooner you apply, the more time you have to practice. When you have final year exams, the UK exam to practice, maybe other entrance exams, you don't wanna be rushing this, okay? When it comes now for the parents, when it comes to money, it is not the nationality that matters, but it is where you're paying taxes. Now, most of you are, of course, I guess paying taxes, families are paying taxes in Turkey, non-EU country, that is why um, your tuition fee will be 15,800 euros per year. All right. Now, financial aid. Catholica itself doesn't offer scholarships, but there is, there is the existence of a financial aid scheme, which all the other universities also offer, which is government money, Diritto allo studio, and now I know, by the way, that Firenze is really good at this, so they will explain to you again when you are ready, okay, when you want to discuss this, but let me just give you my, my opinion. There is this government money, which we match as university matches, okay, so the two, let's say, entities work together, okay, and say we have X amount of financial aid. The fantastic part is that if you are eligible, you pay nothing. And this is amazing, okay? And you can even get money for food and for accommodation. But often it sounds too nice to be true in the sense that you do not know if you get this financial aid before you arrive. So it's a gamble. There's no way of knowing. 
The results are published late, okay? There are limited funds. If you think how many international students and Italian students all are from the same source of financial aid. If you think in the, Lom in the Lazio region, which is where Rome is, you think about the public universities, how many students there, because it's much cheaper. So imagine how many there are. Everyone is asking for this. So the competition is much harder and limited funds. And there is, of course, yeah, really, really high competition. So my idea is what I tell students is, you know that it exists, but you cannot rely on it. It is too dangerous because if you come saying, ah, but I'll, get, I'll try for the scholarship, for the financial aid, you apply and you don't get it, what are you going to do? Are you going to leave after one year, halfway, six years, three years down the line? I don't want that for you. So please be very, very honest with your families. Look at your finances and you know that you need 16,000, just under 16,000 euro for the tuition fee and you need 10 to 12,000 euro for living costs. So you have a budget of just about 26,000 euros per year. That's pretty much me done. I think I've given you the key information. I would much rather leave it to um, question and answer. So 20 minute presentation, 10 minute Q&A. Here again is the QR code. If after the 10 minutes we wanna carry on with question and answer, I will be logging in as soon as we finish here. This is the email address, of course, use Firenze because they know what they're talking about. And so they have all the information. We are constantly WhatsApping each other. So they're completely up to date. Um, that is the website, international.unicat.it, okay? And using Instagram and using Facebook as socials is a fantastic way not only to visually see, because in this presentation, I didn't put a lot of photos, but of course, also to get in touch with students, Turkish students, other nationality students, okay? Um, there are, yeah, 80, 80 students from this year, and last year it was only 50. All right, so you know that there's many different international students on medicine. It's a great way to get in touch um, for past, current, and of course, amongst you, future students. All right, that's pretty much me done. I'm going to be opening the chat. I'm going to interrupt. Actually, sorry, I'm going to leave this on maybe for just a few more minutes if you want to scan the QR code. And I'm going to interrupt the um, screen sharing so we can do question and answers.